This is Brandon Turner. I'm doing case B for Peter and Sarah Henderson. Um, for the part of the video, I'm going to be discussing life insurance and long-term care insurance um, to better clarify what was put in the plan. So here we go. Um, in going through the analysis, I simply looked at what they had. Um, I believe the death benefit that both Peter and Sarah have is an adequate amount of death benefit to cover all of their needs, especially given some of their uh, extraneous uh, circumstances, given their child with the uh, need for the special needs trust to ensure that that's fully funded. Um, Although they have an adequate amount of life insurance, the issue with their life insurance right now is a significant portion of the death benefit is set to expire here in three years. Um, that will not work given the need to fund a special needs trust for the children or for their, uh, their youngest child. So my recommendations would be to go back through, re-review the life insurance, um, continue with the current death benefit, maybe add a little more just because some companies do offer a break point once you have a certain dollar amount of coverage. So figure out what's most cost effective for them, but look at some form of permanent insurance as they definitely have the long-term need for it. In the analysis, I did not address long-term care. That's something I typically address closer to age 50 for clients. Um, However, if we're looking at redoing their life insurance, it most likely makes sense to add a uh, chronic care or long-term care rider to their long-term or to their uh, life insurance policies. In doing so, there is very little additional cost, but this could help offset a significant spend down of assets if there did happen to be a long-term care need down the road. Um, although Peter is very aggressive, his wife Sarah is not, so I would probably look at a fixed or at most an indexed universal life policy for them. Um, in doing so, this does take, if we look at just the universal life, it does take it, all of the market risk out of it. We're simply just looking at cash value growing at a fixed rate. The other nice thing about doing something like this, we can utilize a 1035 exchange and, uh, combine both of Peter's policies just to make things more efficient. Um, it would help offset some of the monthly premium cost as we would be lump summing in approximately $20,000. Um, if Peter wanted to take a little more risk with the insurance for the potential of some tax-free growth at retirement, he could look at utilizing an indexed universal life policy where, you know, the worst he can get is 0%. The best he can get is oftentimes capped. One of the products we'd be looking at would be capped at 11%. Um, I think that this gives an adequate amount of potential growth for Peter. As earlier in the analysis, he had indicated he was targeting a 9% rate of return with some of his stocks. So I think that if we could get between a 0 and 11% rate of return on an index policy, that that would do well for him. Um, when assigning beneficiaries to the policies, obviously, first and foremost, you're going to put the spouse as the beneficiary. However, at the end of that, we do need to, in working with uh, the Henderson's estate planning attorney, set up a family trust as well as a special needs trust, carve off a portion of the life insurance, have the death beneficiary, or sorry, the beneficiary at death, the special needs trust, and then the balance going to the family trust um, for the other two children. Um, that's one option. The other option is purely use the insurance to fund the special needs trust and any cash that is left in the rest of their assets allocate towards the children because I feel that there's enough in death benefit to give reasonable maintenance and support to their youngest child with, uh, with the disability. Um, any other major concerns for me? Um, on the insurance front, I definitely think Peter needs to look at additional disability insurance, which is explained in the analysis um, in the ballpark of, sorry, 
sorry, pulling it up. Another $1,122 a month would be the approximate shortfall if something happened to Peter for them to reasonably be able to reach the rest of their goals. Um, that's assuming there is no Social Security disability or anything like that. As the Hendersons had noted in uh, the data gathering material, they did not want to include. Uh, thank you very much for your time.